Hello everyone, this is attorney Grant A. Teppen. I am an estate planning and probate attorney based in Manteca, California with an office in Livermore, California. This is a continuation in my series showing you how to fill out the various forms required to effectuate a limited conservatorship of the person in California. That is when you have a developmentally disabled individual and you wish to make legal decisions such as medical decisions, uh, contractual decisions, residential decisions for that developmentally disabled individual. Okay, so nothing in this video is to be construed as legal advice, it's just how I fill out the form, and nothing in this video is intended to create an attorney-client relationship between you and me. Hopefully, the video will be successful in making it so you don't need an attorney at all. So, let's jump in. I'm not going to put a state bar number here because I'm filling this out as though I were not an attorney. Here it's all pretty self-explanatory. You put in your name. You don't have a firm name, so not, a, not applicable. Street address. I'm going to put my Manteca office's address. Fax number is optional. You don't need to put it if you don't have one. I understand not everyone has a fax. Same with email address. Not everyone has one. It's optional. Attorney 4. This is where you put in pro per. That is legalese for you are representing yourself. Superior Court, County of. This is where you are petitioning for the conservatorship. Make sure that you are petitioning the right county, which is usually where the limited conservatee is domiciled. And for the information below this, make sure you fill it out for the court where the conservatorship will be heard. Sometimes counties have more than one courthouse, and you want to make sure you fill this out for the correct courthouse. So I'm going to do this for San Joaquin. You can just skip the mailing address if it's the same as the street address. Conservatorship of the person is what we're asking for here, which is what you usually do for limited conservatorships unless the limited conservatee has substantial assets. All right, most of the time they don't really have any assets other than what their parents or their family has provided for them. They might have some governmental benefits, but if you are able to be um, the um, assigned uh, payee, the person who's in charge of handling that money by the government, then you don't need to ask for a limited conservatorship of the estate. Let's say I'm asking for one of John Smith, who would be the proposed conservatee. Case number. You may or may not have one by the time that you get this to your doctor. You can give this to your doctor before you've even started the petition, although you should make sure that you have a fresh capacity declaration when you are filing for the conservatorship. I've had judges look at capacity declarations that were maybe eight or nine months old, and they raised concerns that maybe it was a little outdated. We were able to talk our way through it, but the purpose of my videos and my advice is to make this easy. I recommend you have a capacity declaration that is relatively fresh, not stale, recent in date. All right. So this form, the capacity declaration, is what the doctor, the attending physician, any physician who has seen the developmentally disabled individual, the proposed conservatee, and is willing to fill this out. Okay. So basically, what you're putting here is, first of all, you're going to ask if they're able to attend a court hearing. If you know the hearing date, you would put that here. This is very important to uh, fill out because sometimes the limited conservatee can have a really hard time going to a court proceeding, and you don't want to put them through that. And if the doctor agrees, then the court won't push and won't require you to appear. But in general, the rule is the proposed limited conservatee should appear. So if you feel like that might be an issue, make sure to talk about it with your doctor. And if the doctor is willing to check the box below later in this form, then you might not have to have the limited conservatee appear. 
um, you're probably going to check box B as well because this is what most people are most concerned about when they're requesting a limited conservatorship, the ability to make medical decisions for the proposed limited conservatee. C, you are not going to check. This is for an individual who is not developmentally disabled, typically, unless they were developmentally disabled and have a major neurocognitive disorder like Parkinson's or something that was developed later in life or dementia. Um, you're probably not going to have to worry about this. Now, this is where you're on easy street, insofar as all the rest of this stuff is for the doctor to fill out, all right? Your job is to make sure the doctor fills it all out. Sometimes doctors rush through these. I would say 50% of the time doctors rush through these and don't check all the boxes, don't fill out all the forms. And guess what? You might not have a happy judge. You might have a judge who tells you to go and get another one of these done. So let's try to avoid that. Um, typically doctors are good at getting the obvious boxes. I'm going to show you the places where I've had problems. Um, Basically, they usually do the first page pretty well, and they usually do the second page pretty well. Where they start to have problems is right here on 6D. You notice how there are actually these three columns here. Um, sometimes they only fill out the first column and don't even look at the second or third. So you want to make sure that those were filled out completely because that's a place where I've noticed problems. The other place where I've typically noticed problems is this initial part here on 7B. Um, it, chances are you're applying for this because you want to be able to make medical decisions, at least in part that's why you're applying for this. So this part will apply and I've seen the miss 7B a lot too. Um, I used to highlight the forms and usually each question I used to highlight for the doctor so they would notice it. But some courts with their scanners, they pick up the highlighter in a crazy way and it's not necessarily easy to read for them. So I'm on the fence about the practice of highlighting. It usually makes sure the doctor sees everything, but sometimes then you have a court complaining about a document that's illegible. So I just recommend going through it after you've gotten it from the doctor, like right after, to make sure that it was completely filled out. Go through methodically, go through each part and make sure they filled out name, office and address number, who they are, information about the proposed conservatee, information about the proposed conservatee's ability to attend the court hearing. They filled out all of the evaluations of the mental functions, paying particular attention to 6D, the three column portion here. Make sure that also, for the ability to consent to medical treatment, they have initialed 7B if it applies. 99% of the time you're going to want that. All right? And it's that easy. You get this back from the doctor. You file it with the court at least a couple of weeks before the court hearing. Keep an eye out for the court's probate notes, which are typically posted online, and we'll give you a heads up if the court sees any issues. And boom, you have completed the capacity declaration, had it filed with the court. This is a really important document for the court because it gives them the understanding that a medical professional believes under penalty of perjury that this individual can not manage their um, uh, physical health, their clothing, their shelter, their hygiene, etc., etc., um, in a manner that's appropriate. So it's pretty much the cornerstone on which a conservatorship is built on. So I hope this was helpful for everyone. Thanks so much for watching the video. Have a good one.